Hello and welcome. My name's Heather. I'm a registered professional counselor, and today I'm going to be analyzing Never Have I Ever Season 3. If you haven't checked out my analysis for Never Have I Ever Season 1 and 2, make sure you check that out here afterwards. So the season starts off with Davy and Paxton being an official couple. We see that her self-worth is centered around what people think of her as Paxton's girlfriend. Like, it's believable that we're together and that one person wouldn't have to be like a gigantic whore to make the other person like them, right? Her main motivation is to make other girls jealous of her instead of really wanting to be with Paxton. Davey hoped Eleanor was right. Not only because it was fun to have people be jealous of her, but because she didn't want anything to ruin the dream of her finally dating Paxton. Her intentions were often driven by fear. Fear around other people thinking she wasn't good enough for Paxton. Fear that he would dump her if she didn't sleep with him. What's the worst that can happen? Paxton dumps you and your popularity plummets into the toilet again? So what? And fear that he would leave her for his ex. Whoa, what the hell was this? He apologized to you. Now back off. Davy's insecurities reached an all-time high when she got the results of a compatibility test. Which, by the way, the accuracy of these compatibility tests are highly debatable. She felt extremely jealous when Haley and Paxton got each other on this compatibility test, and she felt that it made sense for the two of them to be together. So I do want to say that jealousy as an emotion is completely normal. It's natural to feel hurt when we see our partner showing interest in someone else, particularly if we're younger or if we've been hurt before. The important thing is how do we communicate that to our partners? Clinically, jealousy can be defined as an emotion that serves to motivate behaviors to protect an individual's relationship from alternative mates. Other scientific literature states that jealousy is interpreted as a sign of caring and concern for one's partner and research has been shown that it can be positively associated with romantic love. All to say that jealousy in moderation is completely normal from time to time. In this case, Davy's jealousy led to the breakup between her and Paxton because her insecurities got the best of her. Did we discover that being in a romantic relationship doesn't necessarily solve all of our problems. She was feeling insecure about what other people thought of her. She found it really hard to believe that he actually liked her. No one else thinks we make any sense. No, you don't think we make any sense. <sighs> because when we walk down the halls, I know what everyone's thinking. Oh, why is he with her? He's too good for her. Ultimately, it came down to her views around herself and her self-worth. She felt that she wasn't worthy enough to be Paxton's girlfriend. And she put him and their relationship up on a pedestal that she felt that she couldn't reach. I don't think we can have a real relationship until you like yourself. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are around season three, so let me know in the comments below. After the breakup, she goes through the different stages of grief. Now, I do wanna say that these stages are not linear. It's completely normal to jump from stage to stage. It's normal to feel sad one day and angry the next, or feel like you've accepted it one day and then you realize that you're in denial about it. So it doesn't mean that in order to get over a breakup, you need to hit all the stages only once in a linear fashion. That's definitely not how grief goes. And I think that this idea that grief is linear or that you have to hit all these different stages of grief in order to hit acceptance is very misleading. It can definitely bring up a lot of feelings of shame and guilt and confusion, especially when people are jumping back from stage to stage. Before I forget, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe for more analysis videos like this. So one of the hardest things after a breakup is finding out that your ex has moved on or that they've started seeing someone else. Paxton has a new girlfriend. Yep, hard to be at peace with that. It definitely is not easy to see our ex move on, especially on social media or if it's in person, like at their school. This is one of the most common scenarios that I see for my clients. I actually created a whole separate video on what to do if your ex moves on quickly. So if that's something that you're interested in, definitely take a look at that afterwards. It just brings up a lot of general feelings of sadness, knowing that the person that you once loved and cared for is moving on and is happy with someone else. Davy is also really concerned around proving that she's over Paxton and that she doesn't care that he's moved on. I'm really sorry if this Phoebe thing hurts you. Hurts me? No, I'm fine, Brosif. I'm also talking to people, loads of guys, so. Which is just more proof that she's putting a lot of emphasis on what other people think of her. In the meantime, she meets Des and they really hit it off. It seemed that Davy had a real connection to Des and she wanted to explore that. However, Des ghosts Davy. Come on, come on. Hey, is my phone working?
Now, I generally don't recommend anyone to ghost other people. It's very hurtful, it's emotionally immature, and you know, it can cause a lot of distress in the other person. Des definitely could have communicated to Davy about his feelings and concerns about her not being over her ex and not wanting to pursue her, but instead he just ghosts her because he didn't want to have that difficult conversation. Look, I'm sorry, that was shitty of me. But after that party, I kind of started to wonder if I should really be hitting on a girl who was just crying over another guy. I was only crying for like six minutes. It definitely should not be the new norm when it comes to dating or meeting people, but unfortunately it is. So let's try to, let's try to do better, shall we? After that, it seemed like she forgave him. They started dating each other. However, we see that there's a pattern in the way he communicates or doesn't communicate. So we see that after his mom tells him to end things with Davy, I want you to end things and I'm not gonna change my mind. He still tries to ghost her. He tries to keep a distance from her. He doesn't respond as much. He resorts to lying. He resorts to avoiding her, or as Ben would call it, the slow fade. Actually, I haven't seen him, but that's only because he's busy. Right, he's pulling a slow fade. It's not a slow fade. Right, right, right. He's just fading away very slowly. Instead of officially breaking things off. Once Davy finds this out, she is understandably upset because he wasn't honest with her and he didn't communicate with her what was going on. And she also felt that he wasn't standing up for her or the relationship. He took his mom's side because he didn't want to upset her and also because she is financially responsible for him. I mean, yeah, it's unfortunate how he handled the situation and he definitely could have communicated to Davy about what was going on, but it's not that far-fetched that someone in his age, maybe with his culture, and also the type of relationship that he has with his mom to do what she says. The problem with this is that he wasn't honest with her and he was trying to avoid that uncomfortable conversation again, just like before where he ghosted her. I just didn't know what to do. I mean, I really don't want to break up. Then don't. I can't go against her. She's my mom. I go against my mom like 40 times a day. And I understand why Davy was so upset. She feels that sense of rejection. She feels that he's not fighting for her and it's okay for her to feel that way. Totally understandable. However, it is not okay for her to throw coffee in his face, even if it's iced coffee. That action in itself is a hostile act. It is a sign of aggression. She could definitely express that she's angry or disappointed or hurt. However, she can communicate that using her words and not having to throw something in somebody else's face. What Des did to her does not justify her hostile reaction to the situation. It's almost as if we got a glimpse of like Davy from season one in which she kind of just reacts to feelings of anger or feelings of rejection. And she kind of just does things in the moment without thinking about the long-term consequences. Although we see the slight regression from Davy, there has been a lot of growth from her. One of the biggest signs of her growth is realizing that her fantasy of being with Paxton was no longer a priority or needed as a distraction. You kind of got me through the death of my dad. How? <laughs> By being a dream. We also see a lot of healing from her grieving process. Coping with grief is a never ending journey. And we see that Davy is dealing with different feelings that come up with moving on. So for example, there's a lot of guilt associated with her moving on, which a lot of people also feel and deal with when they feel that they're no longer thinking as much about the lost loved one or when they feel that they're not as sad as they were before. And this can definitely bring up a lot of feelings of guilt, guilt that we're gonna forget the person that we lost or guilt that we don't love them as much as we did because if we did love them we'd be sad all the time you've been happier lately and experiencing less frequent waves of grief that means you're healing and that doesn't mean you love your dad any less and we can see that davy is struggling with this especially since she's taking it on as her identity i let myself get so caught up having fun with des i forgot to be the sad girl who lost her dad and again, it's completely normal that she's still going through these different feelings of grief because her dad passed away not that long ago. We also see that she experiences a panic attack and she gets triggered from the concert. Oftentimes when people have certain trauma, it gets associated with the situations or certain people or certain environments. And that often triggers a certain response from our bodies. We see that Raya was there to help comfort Davy. However, she uses this as an excuse to get Des to end things with her. Earlier tonight, I found her on the bathroom floor hysterical. She said she saw her dead father in the audience. Oh my God, is she okay? She's fine, but honey, 
That girl has a lot of problems. Raya believes that these vulnerabilities and the hardships that they went through are a sign of weakness as she thinks that it's going to negatively impact Dez's life. Unfortunately, this is the reality when it comes to society and stigma around mental health, and this prevents a lot of people from being able to reach out to counselors or therapists to be able to even talk about just regular daily challenges that they may have, or to have someone listen to them or understand what they're feeling. We see that the grief has brought Davy and Nalini closer together. Nalini is still very strict when it comes to raising Davy. However, she's more open to listening to Davy's needs. Is this about a boy? Even though I won't let you date, I do care if you're heartbroken. And more open to showing her support. Davy does not have problems. She's just been through something unimaginable that would break someone as flimsy as you in an instant, and she has persevered. In the end, Davy realizes which relationships are most important to her. This includes her relationship with her mom. I just, I need more time with you. Is that okay? Realizing that Ben was the right choice for her and that he would always accept her. And also realizing that she needs a healthy, positive relationship with herself. If today taught her anything, it was that she already fit in. And as her father proved, there are no guarantees in this life. Suddenly, she felt like the present was a very precious thing. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more analysis videos like this. In the meantime, feel free to check out my other therapist reviews videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, be kind and love yourself.